Hello and welcome to Infinity. I've got some more free macros for you and uh, this set is about colour selection. And I did some kind of research and uh, experimenting so and so there's a lot of different ways of, of doing it. And um, anyway, let's get on with it and to first of all you're going to need the library tab up here and if you're not sure how to do it go to View Studio and the library tab there. Then you can either drag and drop the .af macros file in the links below and you can also go to the little hamburger up here, import macros, and you'll get to Dave's colour selection there. And if you open this one up, you're going to get seven different macros here. And I'm just going to go through a couple of them this time and talk more through others in future videos. But there's details on all of them and how they work and how to use them in the download file in that link below. So let's start off with RGB selection. If I click on that, this actually shows the standard approach to this and other selection macros that I've done, which is I basically do a merge visible. So it takes a copy of everything, um, even including if there's any adjustment layers and puts it on the top. And then there's a procedural texture underneath there, which basically it adjusts the alpha or transparency to create effectively a selection. So what you see on the top is only the selected layer. So if I turn off the bottom layer of this, you can see that the, by default you've got something selected here. And uh, the way that comes, if I double click that, and you might have to drag this up a bit here to see all the controls. So I've got red, green and blue. So you just set the 8-bit value 0 to 255 for each one of those. You've got an analog slider as well to do some adjustment. And at the bottom you've got tolerance. And so what you're seeing here is for 0, 0, 0, in other words, black with some tolerance uh, on that. Because if you turn it all the way down, you're just going to get the bits which are true black. So what we do is if I put the bottom layer on again and then if I use the pipette up here and drag it down and say let's change, go into the reds here and just drop that there and if I then click on the pipette again it puts it into the colour here and so we not got the values so it's 194 0 and 0 so I can just put in 194 and 0 and 0 and uh, you can't see any selection here because the bottom layer is on, but if I turn that bottom layer off, here we go. Then this is the selection made. And I can increase the tolerance here and it will select a wider range there, but it also starts selecting other things as well. So there's a point at which you just want to kind of turn it up to what you do. And this, this shows the limits of this type of selection. It is very accurate in terms of it will look for 194 naught naught and nearby colours, but you'll pull in a whole bunch of other things. And it's that nearby colour thing, which is a bit of the dilemma when doing this kind of selection. And later uh, of the macros you'll see are better at that kind of thing. But when you want that precision, this is the way you can go. So, for example, then all I can do here, and again, this is the same with others. I've got this selected here. And I can turn that off now, unless I want to go back and adjust it, of course. And I can on here, I can apply any kind of adjustment. So if I say a good go adjustment to say I do a recolor on this, this is applying above here. It's applying above because if I go to assistant manager here and add adjustment as a new layer there, I've got that set as opposed to as child, but I can always drag it in. So it just applies down here. So now I can change the hue on this and that area selected will change a bit. So I can change it whatever I want here, maybe turn down the saturation a bit, play a little bit with the lightness. But you see it's quite limited in that scope here. So in this particular application might not be the best way of selecting. What you can get as well is some other areas of the picture are showing up. So if I take the bottom layer off, you can see there are other things around here. And if I painted on one of these here, then you know, as, as a mask, 
I'd get a, it's kind of the wrong effect. Because if I say go to the bottom one here, let's get a paintbrush tool. You can see here it actually would bring back a lot. So what I need to do is go to the top here, add a new mask on here. And now if I paint black on this, this is going to remove it. So you can tidy up the picture like this. And say so this applies to most of the other macros so that the adjustment here is only in that area there. And then, of course, you can always go back here to the recolor and play with different colors again on that or go to the select color here and play along with, with the fine adjustment of this. And that's a one of the selection methods used. So that's the first one. Second one, relatively quickly, is RGB weighted selection. And what we do here, turn off the bottom layer again, here is I can turn up the it's kind of relative weight. And you see here, it's actually a really, really simple uh, calculation, which you can have play around with if you like. So if I turn up the red here, I'm going to see more of the red here. But I've got other colors coming in here. So maybe I can turn down the green. And they've got red or some of the green here. And blue, if I turn down blue, I'm going to get rid of some of the things there as well. But also see when I'm doing this, I'm losing information there. So maybe if I go the other way with blue, it's not going to do anything. So literally it's playing around with balancing these. You've also got the strength effect here. And if you just put your mouse over it and roll the mouse wheel, you can see. So turning it down, it's not so strong an effect. But if you turn it up, you get a stronger, harder selection. And again, as before, you can put a mask on and wipe out those areas that you don't want. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll come back and talk about the other macros in a future video. Thank you very much for watching.